spins around like that. And then it'll be Jake's turn. We'll be doing back and forth, back and forth. And we'll do that until both are very comfortable. So both the faller, the person getting thrown, the uke, he's doing a good break fall. Okay, so he's very confident in his break falls. And she's very confident in how to do this spin throw, this, this spinning action. One more time, and then we're going to move on. So she's going to turn around. Right, so she's going to turn around, and she's going to spin, and that's it. Okay, now we'll take that moving up. Teach in sequence or a progression of skill. A good way to look at this is to teach in layers. Teach the basic element of a technique or movement, and as the student progresses in it, gaining skill, understanding, and confidence, add another layer to, to that skill. The coach knows when to add another layer when the student demonstrates a basic level of ability in performing the skill in practice and with a cooperating partner, as well as develops an understanding of how that skill will work best for him. This produces confidence in the student and is the best time to progress further in the technique or move on to another skill. Now, what she's doing is she's got a grip here with her left hand on the sleeve, and her right hand is again behind his neck. That's perfect. She's leaning with her right foot, which is directly under her hip. Okay. Now, when she's going to spin around, now what she, as she does this, she's going to pull forward like this quite a bit up. And when she does this, she's going to be like looking at the back of her wrist, just like she's like she has a wristwatch on. She's looking at the time. Okay. And, she, and now she's going to turn around. Now, she's going to put her heel right in front of his toe. He's no longer on his knees, is he? He's on his feet. So her heel is right in front of her toe, near his toe, and she's ready to throw. Now, when she throws him over her, both her hip and her leg, he's going to do a good break fall. Teach a lead-up skill and then progress to the next skill. When teaching, one thing really does lead to another, and this is especially true in judo. As the old saying goes, one has to learn to walk before learning how to run. Now, teach precise judo skill. In other words, there are no shortcuts in teaching judo. As the great basketball coach John Wooden once said, small things make big things happen. Teach the gross motor skill of a movement, and as the student starts to progress in that skill, emphasize the details of how to make that movement work. An example is to make sure that beginners learn the correct method of kumikata. If this is overlooked, the ability of the student to control an opponent when applying the throw will be certainly diminished. Long sleeve grip. When my hand on the lapel, it's going to be above his elbow, between his shoulders, right above the triceps. Okay, that's the grip. So the basic thing we did last week is this, where I'm going to pull up, and as I pull up, I'm going to look at the back of my hand, and like this, so I can pull up like this. So you can bring it up on his toes. Like this. So, so around here, this this hand here will pop up too. Okay, you see that? Pop up here. See that? Each time I'm turning, and I'm turning, looking here, my head's looking away because I could come in and come in to my Nippon Sarinagi. That's what I'm going to do. Okay? We've done that. We've done that. Now, let's take it literally a step further. A lot of time, in fact, most of the time, you'll catch him when he's moving. You'll catch him a throw when the guy's stepping. And we can make him step. And one step is all you need. Jake, he's going to do some Uchikomis on Sayaki. Every time he steps, does this look kind of familiar to the other drill we did earlier? We can make him step one. Okay, this time he's going to fit in. Ready? Moving Uchikomi, let's go. And finish with a throw. Go. Good one. All right. <laughs> Good one, Phil. Good.